when filling out our Laplace transform table, a critical entry that we get is the Laplace transform of the cosine of a, where a is a constant, times t. And sine is equally important, but we can use a number of methods. We can use our information about what the Laplace transform of a derivative of a function is to find the sine based on the cosine. Or we could apply the same method I'm going to use now. It gets a little bit hairier trying to use it for the sine, but it's not that bad. And so on Khan Academy, they have a video of Sal doing the sine. And uh, similarly, the cosine can be done the same way. To find that Laplace transform, you need to do a double integration by parts problem. That's not very fun. And if you want to test it out, try evaluating the integral from 0 to infinity of, I mean, this is just the definition of the Laplace transform, e to the negative s times t times the cosine of at, plugging in our function there, dt. This is not pleasant to deal with. I am going to show you in this video a way that we can express the cosine of at as a sum of complex exponents that is going to exploiting the property of linearity of the Laplace transform and a couple other neat properties are going to significantly ease the process of calculating this Laplace transform. So first, what do I mean by re-express cosine? Well, what I mean is that we can use Euler's formula. Euler's formula. This formula is, well, not only is it uh, really cool, it's where we get identities like e to the i pi equal negative 1. In its general form, in its general form, Euler's formula says that e to the i times any number x equals the cosine of that x value plus i times the sine of that x value. Now how is this useful to re-expressing the cosine function? Well, what we can say is now bear with me, we're going to show why this works. I am going to tell you that we can rewrite the cosine function as 1 half times the value e to the i times at plus e to the negative i times at. Now, if you don't see where I'm going with this yet, bear with me. Let's substitute these values into Euler's formula and let's work it out. So we get 1 half times e to the i a t. What we really care about here is this a t. The a t here is our substitute for x. And we got to remember that this one is really a negative a t here. Uh, I'm not circling this negative, although we can. There's a negative there. But for this first term, let's plug it in. We get e to the i a t. a t is x. So let's plug it into our formula. We get the cosine of x, x is now a t, plus i times the sine of x is a t. And I'm going to go into the next line to finish this here, plus cosine on this one, the x is negative a t, and plus i times the sine of, again, negative a t. Now, based on properties of the sine and cosine function, we know that the cosine function is an even function which is a way of saying that if the input is negative, cosine stays the same. So we can make this positive. But the sine function is not this way. The sine function is an odd function, which means that if we make its input negative, the function itself becomes negative. So I'm going to erase this plus sign here, and we can replace it with a negative in turn for making this plus. And this is our equation now. And one thing you might notice is, well, we have a plus i sine at. We have a minus i sine at. These will cancel out. Boop. And we will be left with, we'll be left with 1 half times the cosine, well, 2, because we have two of these, 1 half times 2 times the cosine of at. And what is this? Well, 1 half and the 2 cancel out. So we're simply left with the cosine of at. Now, when I saw this, it almost blew my mind. What a weird way to write the cosine of at. Right? You're using this complex exponent, two of them. You're multiplying it by 1 half for some reason. And if 
you have seen hyperbolic trigonometry functions, you may notice that these are actually fairly similar to them, except that we're multiplying by an i here, so that just added another language, another layer of complexity onto this. Why is this the case? And what we'll see, though, is that this representation of the, the cosine of at will be super useful for plugging into the Laplace transform, because as you see, we have a constant, which, as we know, the Laplace transform is a linear uh, transform, so we can take that out, and we got a plus here, so we can separate that out again. We've got e to the something times t, so, all right, so many good things are going on. Let's just plug it in and see where it's all going to go. So let's pick a nice color for this. The Laplace transform of the cosine of at we just showed is equal to the Laplace transform of this thing, one half times e to the i times at plus e to the negative i times at. And this here, because we know the Laplace transform is a linear operator, we can separate our terms out. So we get that this equals the one half times the Laplace transform of our first term in here, e to the i a t, plus the Laplace transform of our second term in here, e to the negative i a t. And now that we have this, we can use another property of the Laplace transform, which I'll write in here. And if you want a proof on this, I recommend that you just plug it into the formula for the Laplace transform. It falls out fairly easily. You should be able to do it. But it is that the Laplace transform of e to, and I won't use the same constant here, so I'll say maybe e to the m times t, e to the m times t, well, I'll say times f of t to be general here, e to the m t times f of t, this equals f of t minus m. So this here is, well, I should say the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of f of t minus m. Or if you want to write this in with different notation, you can also write capital F of t minus m. So given this fact, how can we use this to evaluate what our expression up here? Well, OK, let's come down here with our blue. We say this equals 1 half times, well, here we have a Laplace transform of e to something times t. So that's something, maybe a t, sorry, i a. We can think of multiplying t. And here we have negative i a. We can think of that being our m. And in this case, we don't have an f of t. So we can say f of t equals 1. So to be clear here, in this case, our m equals i a. In this case, our m equals negative i a. This is all the m for this m in our formula. And our f of t, f of t, is going to simply equal 1, because we don't really have anything else multiplying in here. So we can use our formula here. We can say this is going to be the Laplace transform. And quickly, what is, let's just remind ourselves, what is the Laplace transform of 1? Well, I'll just write it down here. It is 1 divided by s. We can use this fact here to start computing, because now we say 1 divided by s minus m. So when we write this out, we pick a new color, we are going to get, for our first term, the Laplace transform of e to the i a t is going to be 1 divided by, and because we have this i a term, we are going to say s minus s minus, and then here our m is i times a, and that is our first term. And now we add on the Laplace transform of e to the negative i a t. In this case, our m is negative i a. Our f of t is still 1, so we have s minus, and now negative i a. I mean, it's just s plus i times a. And we still have this all getting multiplied by 1 half. And we are truly nearing the home stretch now. We can just say 1 half times, and then here we can do some multiplication. We can multiply this term by s plus i a uh, over s plus i a. So we get, uh, and multiplying by 1, that's just s plus i times a. And then here, and this is all going to be divided by s minus i a times s plus i a. On this end, we're multiplying by s minus i a 
divided by s minus ia. So we're going to have here that we get plus s minus ia. So the ias are going to cancel out, which is going to leave us with, if we rewrite this, 1 and a half times. And now s plus s, that is going to turn into 2s. And we divide, and here we have an s minus something times an s plus something, which, as we know from algebra, is s squared. It is difference squares, so s squared minus this second term squared. So minus i squared times a squared. And let me switch to the correct color. And here, we know that we have a 2 and a 2, so those cancel out, 1 half times 2. And we're left with the fantastic expression for the Laplace transform of the cosine of at. So the Laplace transform of the cosine of at equaling, here we have s divided by s squared minus, and then we know that i squared, though, is negative 1. So when we say s squared minus negative 1 times a squared, that's just plus s squared plus a squared. And I think this is a pretty cool way to do it. It uses this pretty strange way of writing the cosine function, but it's also pretty cool. And as an exercise, if you want to try the same for the sine, think about how would you get it in this form of complex exponents, and then what would this process look like for the sine function? Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.